Hi, I'm Nate at Practical Garden Ponds, and in this video, we're going to talk about where to put your pond and why. So let's get practical. So there are really two philosophies about where to locate your pond. There's what I like to think of as the American philosophy because we're very busy people and if you put your pond too far away it becomes a chore, something that you have to do. Oh, I've got to check on my fish, I've got to feed the fish. So I think the American philosophy is to put your pond right where you live. If it's just outside the kitchen window where somebody's doing dishes or, or cooking, that's a great spot. Right For us, right here by the deck is a fantastic spot. We spend a lot of time on this deck. Uh, we will be able to hear it inside on a nice day when the windows are open. We'll be able to hear the waterfall and so forth. And, and so I think that's a great place to put the pond. Now, what I consider the European philosophy is to put your pond way out in the bottom 40 where it becomes a vacation spot in your, at your own home, where you can get away from the phone and get away from the doorbell and other interruptions and spend time out there at the pond. Maybe you make a patio and a grill and so forth way out there at the pond. And that's a great philosophy. Um, we couldn't do that here. Our yard isn't big enough to get far enough away to make it of value. And so I, I really think the value of keeping it right where I live, where I'll be able to interact with it just as I walk past. You know, instead of that chore of going out and feeding the fish, you can stop, take that moment uh, to feed the fish and enjoy the fish in the middle of getting where you're going. So perspective on the pond is really important. When we started this project, of course, we already owned the backyard, so we had to take what we, what we had and, and work with that. But our backyard was sloping away from the deck. The pond was going to disappear over the horizon, and you weren't going to see it. Perspective is so important. So we wanted to be able to see this pond and enjoy this pond from right here, like the captain of a vessel. And so what we did was we made this retaining wall and brought the bottom of the pond up so that instead of the pond disappearing over the edge, we would be able to see into the pond from our viewing area. Now some of our perspectives are still not 100% right. Our waterfall is going to be right below me here and going that way. Ideally, you'd see the waterfall from the house, but we, we weren't able to get that here. However, we're going to spend a lot of time down here in the yard where we will be able to see the waterfall. And more importantly, even when we can't see it, we'll still be able to hear it because it's right up here at this end where, where it'll make beautiful music for us uh, as a waterfall. So that's an important piece of the pond is how well you can see it and enjoy it from where you're at. And there are things you can do to improve those things. So the next thing a person has to do is begin to prepare the infrastructure in their location for their perfect dream pond or practical dream pond in our case. So what we had to do here again we didn't like that it sloped away from the house so we had to build this retaining wall to bring everything up. We'll talk more about what we're going to do with this, uh, what practical thing we're going to do with this retaining wall later. But that was an important part of our infrastructure to prepare before building the pond. In our case it was also a part of our infrastructure to build this fence. We are going to have a six foot deep finished pond here and uh, of course we wouldn't want a neighborhood child to be harmed in our pond and so it was an important part of our infrastructure to put in the stockade fence to protect people from being able to accidentally uh, end up in our pond. We also had to do some preparation, some work inside the house because we plan to put our pumps there. Let me show you that. So you can hear that pump humming. It's not terribly loud but for us we're trying to make that pond out there as close to perfection as we can and so we wanted to hide the pump and its, its sight and its sound away from the pond. We're really only a few feet away from the pond, but we're indoors in the new basement under the kitchen that we built specifically so that we could house the pumps and stuff in here. Um, and so to me, it's just part of making our pond everything we want it to be, hiding the pumps and filters, and yet they're still easily accessible from within the home. Obviously, excavation is important, a very important part of the structure or infrastructure of the pond. And that can be a, a thing you love or a thing you hate, depending whether you're doing it with a shovel or, or with an excavator. Um, but it's a very important part of the pond. Obviously, you get your basic shape from how you dig it out. Uh, and 
it, there's lots of ways in which you can affect the final outcome by the way you shape your hole. However, it's not the end all do all. After you have your liner laid, you can still make character and interesting things with your rock formations, but there's sometimes it's important to think ahead. Right here behind me you see this little knob sticking out. That's actually below water level. Once we cover that with the rubber liner, that's going to be about six or eight inches below the water level, and I plan to put a giant boulder right there on the end of that knob. To me, that's part of the structure that all along I wanted to have a couple of boulders sticking up out of the water. We planned ahead not only is, is excavation taking away what you don't want, the dirt that's where you want to make your pond, but excavation includes leaving behind some of what you do want, some of that underneath structure that will make making the pond take shape a lot easier. You also see Zach digging in the background back there. That's going to be the filter for this pond, and it has to go down deep in order to, to get uh, the filter itself hidden so that we only get the water flowing out of it through the stream bed that'll come into the pond. All of that is that excavation, that hard work of digging, uh, is what really makes your pond take shape. It's also important to have a point of reference. For us, we generally make that point of reference, this red helix marker on the back of the helix skimmer. We try to get that line to represent the optimal water level in the pond. And that puts the cap of the skimmer, the top of the skimmer, right at about uh, the area that we want most of our pond edge to be, just an inch and a half or two inches above water level. And we use that as our reference point. Now, of course, where you put that skimmer is very important. In our case, the retaining wall was the first thing that went in. Again, we want that retaining wall to be an inch and a half or two inches above water level. So we marked this skimmer, put in this skimmer to be exactly in that relationship to the uh, retaining wall. Now, it's very important for you to use in a large pond, a laser level or a transit to keep that level the whole way around the edge of the pond. Uh, in a small pond, you might use a six foot or even a four foot level to do that. But the point of reference and keeping the edge of your pond level around uh, that point of reference is extremely important. We'll show you why. So I'm using this uh, pottery bowl to illustrate the importance of getting your pond level. It just so happens the artist on this particular bowl made the blue rim, uh, but down inside the bowl it's gray. We're going to call that gray area the liner and the blue rim the trim around the top of the pond. And you can see that if this rock were perfectly level, it's not quite perfectly level. If I make this bowl perfectly level, the water is evenly touching the rim the whole way around the bowl. On the other hand, if I would tilt this bowl, you see that not only is the water spilling out one end, which means that's as full as you can ever make this bowl at this angle, but now we've got lots of this gray inside of the bowl sticking out above the water level. When that's ugly black liner, it'll draw your eye right to that ugly black line above the water level. So this is the importance of keeping your pond level. So regardless of the size and style of the pond that you plan to build, these same things we've been talking about matter for your pond. It's really important that you pick a location that's right for you, for your enjoyment of your pond. It's important that you build in the infrastructure ahead of time to get the desired look, to get what you're going for as you build your pond. And then it's very important that you have a point of reference for the water level so that your water level will always look full when your pond's in fact full. In our next video, we're going to talk to you about installing the rubber liner. In the meantime, if there's any way we can help you design or build your perfect pond, we look forward to it. Feel free to contact me or check out our website at www.practicalgardenponds.com.